Hey everyone, this is uh, my daily vlog, episode 4, and I want to talk about the uh, tools we make and how they can actually harm us or destroy us. Now, when I say tools, I don't just mean like the, the tools we use with our hands, the tools that we, we think of when we build a house, when we build a cabinet, when we, um, even when we use a computer to um, graphically design something or uh, work on a spreadsheet, whatever. Uh, these things are all tools, but more specifically, I'd like to talk about the tools we create to interact with the world. We create these certain uh, programs, you could say, within our minds that help us put aside uh, chaotic information and only accept what helps us cooperate with the world and does not put us in conflict with it. Um, it's easy to it's easy to find ways to adapt the world to where we can bear it and live in it and function in it, but it's much harder to diagnose our tools and the methods we use and try to find a better one if, if our methods are bad. Um, a lot of people relate to the world in the way of masculinity when it comes to being a male. A lot of people, females too, but mainly males, uh, try to adopt this alpha male status, this alpha male ideal and uh, try to uh, push down anybody that they feel like is a uh, masculine threat um, and try to assert themselves in a way which brings about a strengthening of their own societal status. And uh, this is very common throughout all civilizations, all societies, uh, both modern and past, is this uh, masculine ideal, this, uh, this belief that one can gain dominance and progress and uh, status in the world by asserting one's own um, value as a leader. Uh, and that's more of an instinctual thing than a, than a purely science, uh, societal thing. Now, um, there are other tools we use in society and in cultures and in religion and spirituality that could be improved on. and that ultimately can destroy us. Just like extreme masculinity can destroy us because others might try to bring us down or, uh, or kill us even um, if we mess with the wrong people. Uh, there are other tools like trying to uh, cunningly convince people that our side is the best side. Whether we identify with a certain religion, whether we identify with a certain politic, whether we identify with just our own, with our own uh, alliance, uh, try to get people to come into an alliance with us, that is. Um, that can be dangerous as well. It's completely selfish, and it's clim this, uh, this ideal is completely centered on what we want from others, but we try to convince others that our side is the best side and they can benefit from our side, whatever it is. Doesn't matter what religion, politics, or just personal. And um, this is dangerous in the sense that people can see through a lot of our lies in, in instances like that if we don't formulate it exactly right. And eventually people are going to realize you're gaining everything and I'm getting nothing. Like the old days of the Catholic Church, for instance. Um, when the Catholic Church was selling uh, basically forgiveness for sins uh, in exchange for money to uh, being donated to the church. And the uh, the monastic, I wouldn't say monastic, but the uh, the priesthood, the bishops, the cardinals, uh, they were taking that money and using it for themselves. And they were acting as if this money was going to building more churches and only going towards God, only going towards spreading the message of God. But in fact, it was going into their pockets. And uh, people eventually saw through that, and it led to a completely different religious movement called the Protestant Reformation, uh, where Martin Luther basically just nailed all his complaints and... Uh, in the form of how the church has been corrupted uh, to the door of a of church. <laughs> and that's what started, you know, that was what the Methodist church, the Baptist church, the uh, Mormon church, the uh, Episcopalian church, uh, Presbyterian church, all they all disseminated from that uh, original decision by Martin Luther to say, okay, look, this is what you're doing wrong and this has nothing to do with God. Now, that's how somebody who's intelligent enough saw through this uh, this selling of forgiveness, which was basically uh, ally with us, give us this amount, ally, ally with us, and uh, you'll benefit. But he saw through that and that was torn apart. 
And that's a macro example. This can happen in every single person's lives. Uh, and if you're in high school, <laughs> this is just this is a very stereotypical example. But if you're in high school, and you're a, you're a guy or you're a chick, and um, you're f the the popular ones on either side, uh, they they don't really recognize you. The and you want their recognition. You might share some gossip that you learned very discreetly or based on a third party, or they just made up with them and try to get them to say, okay, hey, that's pretty funny, or. Uh, Wow, you, really? And they'll, they'll focus on you, and then that makes you feel better. That makes you feel like you're substantiated in whatever, whatever uh, societal context you want to exist in in, uh, in the school system. Uh, and then that kind of transfers to other societal contexts as you get older, but vaster ones and more uh, dangerous ones, actually. But um, and people can see that through that too, and it can completely reverse on you. The only the only way to truly um, be a part of an alliance that benefits yourself is to be a part of an alliance that benefits everyone. Uh, if you genuinely show love, you give somebody something, you appreciate someone, uh, then that that is more likely to yield a positive result for yourself and others than through deception or through uh, playing of uh, popularity. Uh, it's more likely to bring you to a point where you can you can be the person that you're acting like you are. Um, and there's all kinds of painful ways we can be brought down in this world. There's all kinds of truths that we try to avoid so that we may think better of ourselves. And if we think better of ourselves, usually that is associated with the ego. Unless we're completely brainwashed by another into thinking that every action we take that increases our ego is the best action. But usually the actions that we take that uh, try to increase our status in whatever group is purely founded in the ego, in the back of the head, basically. And um, people can see through our lies. It's better to try and not lie. Unless it's, you know, it's being nice. You know, am I fat? Somebody will say, no, uh, you're not fat. You're just husky or something like that. That's an okay lie. But it's better to tell the truth and to be the person you are within without. Uh, outside of yourself. Don't lock away who you truly are in an attempt to meld and find a place in society. Bring out who you truly are and you will find people who appreciate who you are. And that's the only way we can operate as humans that doesn't uh, lack a complete um, problem-solving way of meeting ourselves, our identity, our personality, who we truly are. Because a lot of the time we, a lot of the time we don't know who we are. We don't know why we do this. We don't know why we do that. We don't know if we can improve. So we start spinning these yarns about it to ourselves, about who we are and uh, what we can be and how we can achieve this without ever really looking within and examining ourselves and realizing who we truly are and not just who we want to be based on a relationship to society. And that's all I got to say about that. Uh, feel free to subscribe because I'm going to be making these every day for, uh, for a while now. And this is episode number four of uh, my daily vlog and my thoughts every day. Thank you very much for watching.